ransom captive Israel. Rejoice, rejoice,
right here, right now, we wanted to just take a moment and ask you a question. How often do we look for signs in our lives, for direction, for understanding, to know our place in this world? We want a sign to tell us everything is going to be okay, that there's always hope, there's always grace, there's always the promise of a brighter future. But on our own, in our own strength, in the frailty of our humanness, the fallen nature of our depravity, we come up short every time. But like a fire blazing bright, like a beacon of hope pushing back the darkness itself, God steps onto the landscape of our lives and brings clarity to the chaos. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and his peace, there will be no end given to me and given to you freely, completely, and beautifully eternal. There has not been and never will there be a moment where this child, this king, will not be with you. And the way in which he came speaks more to the everlasting depth of his great humility. And she, Mary, will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated is God with us. Wonderful. Counselor, mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace came to us, was born for us, entered the world with cries of salvation for us, not just for others, but for you with your name in mind. So now we end with the same question. How often do we look for signs in our lives? Where do we look for a sense of belonging? And what do we place all of our hope and trust? Because there is indeed a sign. One that rang out sending the waves of song and sound to all of us. And even today we see this sign. He may be healer to you, provider to some, or comforter to those who mourn. But our prayer today is this. That the signs you seek around you, those you think sustain you, grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his love. Like the thrill of hope that greets you this season, the promise and sign of great joy has come. Our prayer is that you will see, feel, touch, hear Emmanuel. God is with you. That this journey of song today infuses you with the hope and promise you need a sign to you that you have never been alone and you never will. for
I'd like to share about a moment in my life when I knew without a shadow of a doubt that God's presence was with me. I was diagnosed in November of 2008 that I had uterine cancer. And I immediately panicked because it was the big C word, cancer. And so the doctor told me that the type of cancer that I had, it was very aggressive, so they wanted to operate right away. They had me scheduled for surgery on December 31st. And so I prepared the people at work and I told my family. And for a long time, for about two weeks, people were coming and they were giving me their condolences and how sad they were. And that made me really nervous until one day I decided either I'm going to believe God to heal me or I'm not. When I prayed, I said, God, you are the star of this show because I cannot concentrate on the cancer. When I think of cancer, it's bigger than me. But I, I say I'm a Christian, and I say that you're bigger than anything that I know, any opposition I have. So if that's the case, you're gonna to have to be my testimony. My daughter knew that I was feeling a little anxious, and so one day she said, you know, Mom, I just feel impressed that we need to make a vision board. It addressed every aspect of my life I could think of. And so when I went in for the, the surgery, I took my vision board with me. And it had scriptures on it also. And when I got there, my oncologist said, what is that that you have? I said, it's my vision board. I said, when I wake up, I want to see the vision board because I don't want to look back on the trauma of this past couple, this past month, but I want to look forward to what I'm wanting God to do in my life. When the results came back, it came back that they there was no more sign of the cancer there. And so um, I've been going for three years for follow-up to make sure that there has been any remission. Each year now, my oncologist asked me, did you do your vision board? And I said, yes. I said, because God has refocused me to the things that I need to be working on in my life. And so I knew without a shadow of a doubt, me being the fearful person that I had always been, that God was with me every step of the way and he stayed with me through the surgery and he's with me even now.
I was basically born and raised here. Um, and because of that, I've always had a great foundation of a church family and just being able to grow up here. But growing up, I was actually very scared as a child. I was a perfectionist through and through, and so the thought of messing up terrified me. With my relationship with God, um, I was just terrified of him. I just assumed that God was there to punish me and that he was always disappointed in me. And come my senior year of high school, I had a core group of friends that I saw all day, every day. And because of that, we became very close. And those friends did not believe in God. And because I saw them all day, every day, I decided that I would try to believe what they believed. So I did my very best to just not believe in God and to not think that I needed God. And the more I told myself that, the more prideful I became. But in reality, I was incredibly lonely and I was incredibly scared all the time. So I fell into a very deep depression. It was so bad that I used to be a 4.0 straight A student and come my, the end of my first semester of college, I had a 1.2 GPA. I had always known that God was there, but I really tried my hardest to believe that he wasn't. I thought in the back of my head that I was going to turn around and have a relationship with Christ again. I guess I just assumed it was I was going to do it later on in life when it was convenient. I was sitting in my basement one morning on a Saturday and I just felt like God slapped me over the head. He um, asked me what I was doing with my life, why I was doing what I was doing, and what did I think I was going to accomplish without him. And it was such a confirming moment that no matter how hard I tried to run from God, he was never going to give up running after me. He was never going to stop trying to be in a relationship with me. And I felt like that was a moment when every fear I had dealt with growing up, every stress that I had dealt with, and all the perfectionism that I had dealt with, that he was just taking all of that from me and that I didn't have to worry about that anymore.
God of the hills and valleys, and I am not
come on, show some love. And what an incredible, incredible day. It's not over yet. Um, and we just wanted to come up, Kayla and I, and say uh, welcome. Merry Christmas to you as we kick off this Christmas season here at Twin Rivers. Such an honor to have you with us today. We really do um, think it's a big deal that you're here, and we, and we pray for you, and we, we just consider that, uh, that we're just we're blown away that you would choose to spend today with us, so thank you. Um, you know, it, it's kind of an act of hospitality in our church. Um, if you're new, meaning you've been here a few times, or maybe today's your first time, we would love to pray for you. Um, in the seat back in front of you is a prayer card. You could pull that out right now if, and, um, and, and give us a prayer request. Give your friend, family, friends, something going on in your finances, who knows. We, we just really have come to just see again and again and again that prayer changes circumstances. And we would hate to think that you were with us today and we didn't have a chance to just pray for you. So you can take that card out and fill it out and you'll drop it in the offering bucket in a moment. But just this past week, someone sent me an email about how prayer changed a circumstance. They, um, they had been really trying to get their financial life together, and, and the problem was is they made a lot of bad decisions in college, and it just, it just kind of tore up their credit. Just Their credit was in bad shape. They went to a company that, that helps repair credit, and, and the company wanted to falsify some things and say, you know, let's just claim you didn't buy these things, but they said that they really felt like God was saying, no, trust me. Don't do the wrong thing. Trust me, and I'll make it right. And so they, they submitted that prayer request. We prayed over it, and they said out of nowhere, they checked their credit score one day, and a couple of judgments that had been on their record for years all of a sudden were gone, and their score was going up, and they were able to make the purchases that they need to make. What I'm saying to you is prayer changes things, and that's the reason this isn't just a, an act or an exercise. We want to be a part of your life, and we would love to pray over a situation in your life. So take that card out, fill it out, drop it in the offering bucket in just a moment when it passes. But, hey, this is going to be a great week. Already has been a great weekend. It's going to be a great week here at Twin Rivers. Uh, baby, tell some people about what's coming up. Okay, this Saturday is going to be a huge day here at Twin Rivers. We're having our annual brunch with Santa. Um, bring your kids, your grandkids. We're going to have a ton of food and, um, of course, games and crafts for the kids. Um, skip the long lines at the mall and come out and get a free professional picture taken with Santa. Um, all you have to do is go to twinrivers.church and register. And remember that it is all free. Completely free, which is awesome this time of year. So um, I, I hope you'll come. It's one of our kids' best. Uh, you know, they just love it. They're already looking forward to it. Picking out outfits last night with Ellie on what she was going to wear on Santa's lap. And so um, I hope that if you have kids, grandkids, you will join us. Just as Kayla said, though, please register online because there is limited space. There's been a, a lot of people that come. And we want to make sure that you don't have to wait in lines, that you just get to go through and have the games and the crafts. But you got to register. So go to twinrivers.church. It would be a great way to do that. Completely free. It's going to be awesome. Hey, as our ushers come forward... Um, you know, you've heard me say it a thousand times. This is the most generous church on the planet. And, um, and, and I just, again and again and again, you, you just you show that to be true. Um, this weekend, yesterday, here at our church, um, you helped provide Christmas for over 500 people who were in a space that they needed some desperate help this Christmas season. Say, what does that look like? Well, because of your generosity, um, you know, they were given a meal on that day. They were, they were shown love and prayer and all those things. But um, we actually gave them a gift card so that they could use that to, to finance their Christmas meal. And then we turned the whole church into a big department store. And, and what they, basically the kids got to go and shop and pick out stuff for mom and dad. Mom and dad got to go pick out stuff for the kids. It, an incredible day. Hundreds of volunteers, but hundreds of people came through. Here's what's amazing. 80% of the people who were here yesterday, it was their first experience with Twin Rivers. And so the first time they interact with you is a, an act of generosity and love and, and it was just an incredible day and it's not over because next weekend there was a, a lot of senior adults who were shut in and couldn't make yesterday so we're sending teams out and we'll be serving another 130 people next weekend providing the same thing but we're on delivery next weekend it's gonna be incredible all because of your generosity. Not only that, but um, for, for those who call Twin Rivers home, today is very special, again, because of your generosity. We open our special needs ministry room to kids, and so Kids Unlimited is open today. 
Awesome, awesome. It means that uh, special needs families can come and their kids will get a world-class experience. Just upstairs, you go look at the room uh, and be able to come and be in worship and it's going to enable us to give them date nights and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's going to be incredible and it's all because of your commitment to be generous. And so I just can't thank you enough. And here, here's my prayer today. As you get your tithes and offerings or as you get your giving in your hand or maybe you've done it online, here's my prayer. I'm going to pray that you overflow. Here's what scripture is very clear on. You cannot outgive God. And I, as much as Kayla and I have ever given, it, God just always pours back more than we could ever dream or imagine. And it's so much better because it's money and other things. So, I mean, he blesses us financially, but the emotionally and spiritually so much. So um, I, I want you to bow your heads. And I just want to pray this in this season over your life. Father, I'm asking that you see, and I know that you see these generous hearts, but I'm asking you just overflow in this season. God, this season that can bring family struggles, this season that grief can be highlighted, may joy and peace overflow. Father, I also pray financially they overflow. May their businesses succeed. May their, their investments grow. And Father, may their stewardship grow and may they become experts because of your divine wisdom. Lord Jesus, I just pray you'd overflow because they have done so much for so many this weekend alone. God, may you do it uniquely what only you can do in every heart, home, and house here today. Lord, we love you. Thank you for what's happening this weekend as the gospel is going forth and changing lives. And we love you and everybody says, amen, amen, amen.
I've loved about today is it's got a little bit of something for everybody, like a little, you know, like some hip hop, some choir music, heavy metal for you guys, that headbangers out there. I mean, just, it's a great day, man. It's so good to see you. Uh, I just want to share a few thoughts with you before we, uh, we have our candlelight moment together. Um, you know, it was just this past week that I was, our day had begun and, and I was upstairs putting on my shoes when I heard Kayla scream downstairs. And I, I didn't know what was going on, and so I immediately rushed downstairs not knowing what I'd find. And, and um, what I came upon was that Ellie, our four-year-old, had decided to try her hand at cutting hair. And, um, and her client of choice was our two-year-old, who was formerly our curly-haired blonde, Sydney. And, um, and, 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 you know, the thing is that was so bad about it is, is, is Sydney's hair is, is curly and blonde, and it's, it's been a point of pride for Kayla because it, it resembles Kayla as a little girl. But now, in this moment, Sydney looked more like her daddy. And, um, <laughs> and, and, and so it was just, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, you know rightfully so, Ellie was punished, and, and, and then the, the hair was swept up, and the, and the curls were grieved. But in our home, this was not going to be the only thing that happened that day, you know? And, and so we, we've kind of learned to just move on, and, and, you know, you have the moment, and you move on. And so we had kind of all moved on, and breakfast was being served, and, um, and, and the kids were around the table, and everybody's having fun. And, and then I just, all of a sudden, I noticed Ellie wasn't at the table. And I, and I thought, well, that's strange. Ellie's normally, you know, this, this just a ball of life, and she's singing and laughing at the table. She, she wasn't there. And, and so I started looking around for her. It looked high, looked low, and then I found little Ellie behind and under the Christmas tree sobbing. And um, it, it just broke my heart because immediately I realized that we had moved on with the day, but the, the sinful act with the scissors had not left Sydney quite yet. And then so I tried to coax her to come out, and I tried to promise her thing, and she, she just kept covering her face and her tears with her blanket. And so finally, I, I just said to her, I said, baby, why are you hiding? What, what's wrong? Why are you hiding under there? And then, and, and, you know, only way a, a four-year-old can, and through tears, most sincerely, and she just said, because I did something so bad. And, um, and, 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 and you know, when you, you see that, Tip, you know, you would almost think, well, that's typical for a dramatic four-year-old. Until you start to realize that that's the way many of us relate to God. You see, the truth is, for, for a lot of us, something goes wrong in our life, and next thing we know, we've put God at a distance. We've kept him at arm's length because of what happened a decade ago or what happened a, a weekend ago. And next thing you know, you're just you're separated from God. And, 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 you know, even today there are people, you're in God's house, but that doesn't mean that you're close to the God of the house, that you could be here each week and, and still be at distance. And I, I think that that's where a lot of people live because of something that's happened. Guilt and regret and shame become a part of their DNA almost to where they think that I just need to come in, get out as quick as possible and hope not to, to stir up the wrath, to hope not to, to get God's attention. Because, you know, the truth is many people live disconnected, separated, and spiritually unsatisfied with their life. And so, you know, the thing that got me thinking about all this is, you know, what I didn't do that day to Ellie. I was just thinking, you know what I didn't do to Ellie? I didn't say, well, Ellie, you made a big mess of this. And it's going to take a while when, for Sydney's hair to grow back. And so you're not allowed to be with us until this is fixed. I, I, you know, I didn't say that. I, I didn't say, Ellie, that's it. I'm cutting you off. No breakfast today. You know, I, I didn't even say, Ellie, if you'll show you're really sorry and you'll crawl out from under that tree, if, you, if you'll show you're really, then I'll forgive you for what you did. I didn't do any of that. As a matter of fact, I, I don't win father of the year most days. But on that day, I did exactly what any good father should do. I got out of my seat, crawled under the tree, climbed under there and put her in my arms and pulled her out from where she was hiding. And here, here's what I wanted Ellie to know in that moment. I wanted her to know that life is going to throw some things at her, but that I will always be with her. And that's the picture of Emmanuel. God didn't wait for us to come out. He came in. He, he didn't wait for us to get our act together or until we paid a penalty of time or until we were showed we were very sorry. He said in advance, I'm coming in. 
And in the same way that I got down out of that chair and climbed under that tree to get Ellie is the same way Jesus climbed off his throne, came down to our level, and then climbed onto a cross to ensure that we knew he's with us. Now, you know, when you, when you just think about that, I mean, it kind of takes it off the table, doesn't it? So it takes what off the It takes the fact that God wants to be with you, the question of it. It kind of takes it off the table when you consider that God stepped out of eternity and stepped into humanity and, all, and was wrapped in rags and, and, and was dealt the worst life has. And, I mean, it kind of takes it off the table that God doesn't want to be with us. It kind of takes it off the table that you would think, I've done something so bad, I've, I've been too far, it's too long. No, 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 no. He was very clear in his pronouncement and in his coming to earth that there is no distance we've created that he's not willing to cover to be with us. You know, as a matter of fact, the most famous scripture of all, the one that everybody knows, the one that people know that, aren't even, that don't even know scripture is actually connected to Christ's coming. He, 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 the one that everybody knows, you know it, John 3.16. John 3.16 is just the purpose statement for why Emmanuel even happened, why God is with us. John 3.16 is so clear, and it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. These 26 words have the power to pierce anything that has told you a lie that sin has to separate you from God. I mean, these 26 words completely change everything about how we feel about a God who sometimes we conjure up in our minds. And, 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 and sometimes we read this, and it's so quick, and it's so common, and we've heard it so many times that we fail to realize that, that just a small change in a word would have a huge difference. For instance, just consider for the second the first part of it. It says, for God so loved the world. Most of us live as though we would think for God so tolerates the world. For God so, you know, wants to correct the world. For God so, want, he just puts up with the world. But that's not what it says. It says for God so loved. And, and I get God is loving. I just have a hard time believing he loves the world, you know? I mean, I, I, can, I would I totally get it if it said for God so loved the rich. For God so loved the ones that have it together. For God so loves the beautiful. But that's not what it says. It doesn't say for God loves the Europeans or the Africans. It doesn't say for God loves, you know, so loves the, the sober and the successful. It doesn't say for God loves, you know, the, the old or the young. It says for God so loves the world. You know what that means? <laughs> it means if you've ever been in the world, you've been loved. And there's not a day, although they've been, you felt them, though it seemed like you... I'm telling you, it's a fact. There's not been a day in your life you've not been loved by God. And, and just while we're on God's love, let me tell you, there's nothing you can do to repel it, no matter how bad you've been. And there's nothing you can do to earn it, no, how, no matter how successful you've been. It is completely free and constant in your life. You know, but just this, look further in the verse, you know, for God so loved the world, but look at what it also says. It says, for whoever believes... And then now imagine that that word was changed. I mean, Jesus could have easily changed the whoever to whatever. Like, I mean, he could have said, you know, whatever Jew believes. He could have said, whatever person will do this checklist believes. Whatever person who will keep their act together and not annoy me believes. He, he could have done that, but instead there's this word, whoever this word, whoever, that is not qualifying in any way, shape, or form, this pronoun that's wonderfully just indefinite, I mean, any who is a whoever. And it just speaks to us, this, this idea that it is, this word whoever is a wrecking ball to race. It's, it, it's, it's just a, a dynamite to social classes. This word whoever bypasses all of our failures and the worst things that have happened in our past. And this word whoever is significant because it tells us anyone can can receive God's grace, whoever. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And, and if anyone ever tries to tell you that there's a test to pass, a, uh, a list of check marks that you have to accumulate, or if there's, there's only a certain pedigree of person that can receive God's grace, just remember the word whoever. Because whoever tells us that God will take us however we come to him. But not only that, here's the best part of it all. This is the best part. 
Not only is there whoever that provides us the opportunity however we come, but God offers it whenever we want. He offers it whenever we're tired of trying to make life work and we just keep failing. He offers it whenever we're finally willing to give him our lives and stop trying to, to try to be better and try to, to not do the thing and try not to, he, he, whenever. Whenever we're willing to take the abundant life that he planned for us, God is willing to take whoever, however they come, and whenever they choose to come. That's what I love about Christmas is it's just a reminder that God's always with us, always waiting, always open to whoever. You know, that's what I love about it is, is that whenever today you're ready, God will climb down in your life He'll pick you up from under whatever you're hiding behind and he'll set you back at his table to be connected with him. Now, I'm going to ask in this moment for every head to be bowed and every eye closed, kind of a moment of reflection, if you will. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Just thinking about your own life. Let me ask you this question. If you're here today and you feel disconnected from God, you feel disconnected, you feel separated, you're not spiritually satisfied, at some point in your journey, something moved. And you just, you're, you're here, and maybe you're here every week, or maybe this is your first time, but you feel disconnected. I want you to, to be honest with yourself and say, yeah, that's me. Yes, I feel separated. But now I want you to ask your, yourself this, who moved? <laughs> because God's never moved away from you for one second of your life. As a matter of fact, this whole day, he's orchestrated in his sovereignty to communicate how much he wants to be with you. And so in this moment, I'm just going to give you an opportunity to accept that. To just say, today, Pastor Joe, I'm deciding I want to follow Jesus. Today, I'm deciding I want to live no longer separated, not disconnected, but in a relationship with him. And all that that brings, all the peace, all the joy, all the hope, I want that. And so with every head bowed and every eye closed, I I just want to see who, I'm going to pray for those people, the people who are making that decision, and I just want to see who I'm praying for, that's all. So we're not going to embarrass you, but I do need to see who I'm praying for, just so I can put a face with this prayer. And so if you'd say, Pastor Joe, today I'm deciding to not leave this service disconnected from God, but I want to follow Jesus, I want to be in their relationship, I'm deciding that right now, just believing that he makes a way for that to happen. If you're deciding that right now, I just want to pray for you. Will you just wave at me so I can see your face? I see that hand. I see this hand. I see that hand. Just wave at me so I can see. I see you there. Just just wave at me. Nobody's looking. I see you. I'm getting ready to come to the balcony. Just a second. I see you. Just wave at me if if, if you're here. I see you all the way back there. Anybody else? I see you. I see you. Let me me see up there in the balcony. Oh, I see you guys up there. I see you. Just wave at me while every head's bowed there. I see you. Anybody else? Hey, I see that one as well. If you... You said, yeah, here's my hand, Pastor Joe. Well, now I'm just going to ask for your heart. There's a prayer on the screen, and I just want us to pray it as though we were standing down here together. just want you to pray this. Heavenly Father, I admit that I'm a sinner and that I'm lost without you. I believe Christ died in my place, making a way for us to have a relationship. I choose right now in this moment to follow Jesus and his way for the rest of my life. Father, here's the guarantee. All guilt, condemnation, and shame, and all fear that we allow to, se- allow, uh, allow to separate us from you is gone. And the love of God is being just poured out on them. I pray today every lie be silenced in their mind, for they are a whoever, and you have received them in this moment. And so, Lord Jesus, may their life be forever changed. May they leave today different, just with peace and joy and in harmony with you. And may they grow, oh God, may they grow till you can do extraordinary things with their life. And that they live in a relationship with you. In Jesus' name. And everybody says... Amen. Hey, um, if you prayed that prayer with me, you raised your hand. Um, There's a a card in the seat back in front of you. The only reason we would ask you to do this, there's a box that says, you know, today I've recommitted or I'm committing my life to Christ. 
Here's why we do that, because you just made a decision, but now you have a lifetime to live out that decision. And our commitment to you is we will not hassle you. You're not getting on a calling list and all that kind of stuff. I want to send you one piece of mail that just gives you a next step as you follow this through. And, and, and let me just tell you, the rest of your life's going to be the best of your life. It's going to be incredible what God does with you with every step you take. And so I just want you to fill that out. Leave it on your seat. Our teams will pick it up. And, and just one piece of mail, that's all. I just want to tell you what your next steps could be if you choose. Hey, in this moment, um, we're going we're gonna to have our candlelight moment. I want you to take those off your seat and stand to your feet. And this is a moment for everybody. Because John chapter 8, Jesus says this, I am the light of the world. And he goes on to say, um, if we'll choose to follow him, that this light will push away any darkness, that we don't have to live in darkness any longer. Hey, here's what I know about a room full of people. There's darkness in your life. Darkness because of finances. Darkness because of, you know, maybe somebody that's not here this Christmas season. Darkness just at work. Darkness in your marriage. I, I just realized that, we're, we're sh that every person here, there's somewhere that there's darkness. But here's the promise. That because of you are being a follower of Christ, you're going to live in light. And so here's what I'm praying right now. This not just be ceremony. This be supernatural. That as we light these candles, literally, joy and hope and peace come to your heart. And whatever you're facing, you just get this assurance because I am walking in the light. There's nothing that can overtake me. And so as we sing this, I just believe God's going to do something supernatural in every heart here today. So if they'll start lighting those and you will carefully and calmly light the persons beside you, we're going to sing together. into the deepest darkness of every person in this room. May addictions be gone in this moment. May fear and guilt and shame be no more in this moment. Father, may marriages be healed, direction given, finances be redirected, and, and God, miracles take place because a light has shone, and it is the light of Jesus. And because of that, we no longer have to live in darkness. So today, will you restore joy and hope and peace to every heart and may every person here today not be a spectator, but a full participator in your grace on every heart today. Lord, we love you and we pause to say thank you for Jesus and his goodness, kindness, generosity, and most of all, salvation. In Jesus' name, and everyone says... Amen. Hey, as you uh, take your seat, we got one more song. You hold your candle. As you exit today, you can drop those in a bucket as you exit. So if you'll hold those just for one more second, a big finish today. It's, will you help welcome this crew as they come back on? Tell them what a great job they've done today.
Ancient healer, redeemer and king, mighty deliverer, defense and conqueror, my chain breaker, he will set the captives, Lord of creation, giver of salvation, 